Hola, mis amores. Welcome to Tea Time with Nori. My name is Nori Ponzo, and I help millennial women feeling stuck get out of their heads and overcome their paralysis by getting to know themselves. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing five mistakes that people make when overcoming self-doubt. Self-doubt is something that I've struggled with in my life. I see my clients struggle with it. Even my husband has struggled with it at a certain point. And I wanted to share some time, I spent some time with y'all sharing some practical tools that you can utilize to overcome self-doubt and show you how you can avoid making the mistakes that people make when trying to overcome self-doubt so that you can be successful. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to do is define self-doubt. A lot of us use these terms and hear them, but rarely do we stop to think about what do they actually mean. So if you Google self-doubt, the, the definition that comes out is a lack of confidence in oneself and one's ability. That's it. So at the core, self-doubt is a lack of, count, of confidence in yourself, in your ability to actually do something. So what is confidence, right? So if, if self-doubt is a lack of confidence, then what is actually confidence? And confidence at its core is trust, is the trust in something, the trust in someone. If you have confidence in your, in your process, you trust your process is going to work in a certain way. You have confidence in your, in your marriage, you know that your marriage is going to be in a certain way, or you have made, put systems in place to ensure that. If you have trust in yourself, you know you're going to behave in a certain way in a particular situation. So that's really what it means. So self-doubt at the core is this lack of trust, trust in yourself, right? So if you're experiencing self-doubt, you're experiencing some trusting issues with you. Now, now that we know what self-doubt means, I want to walk you through five mistakes that we make when trying to overcome self-doubt. So mistake number one is you allow self-doubt to paralyze you. Now, a lot of people... Whenever self-doubt gets into their mind, whenever you get in your head and you start feeling like, I can't do something, or you start having these questions about trusting your ability to actually do something, we get so caught up in thinking about this and letting our thoughts take our time that we forget to actually take action. So a lot of us never get a chance to really take the action that we need because we're so busy thinking about why we won't be able to take the action that we want to take instead of just actually taking the action. And the reason why we don't take the action is because we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust our ability to take, a cert take the action and to receive a specific outcome. And because a lot of us don't, don't think we're going to get the outcome that we want, we just allow self-doubt to paralyze us because we are attaching ourselves to that outcome. And once we say we're not going to get this outcome, once we define that, even though we don't know whether we're going to get it or not, but the thought that we're not going to get this outcome immediately makes us feel like we shouldn't even try, right? So like an example of this is when you talk yourself out of um, doing things that you want. It's like thinking that you're going to fail. So why even try? One of my clients even and told me, she's like, I used to feel like, um, why should I even try if I'm going to fail anyway? You know, like um, feeling like I failed before. So there's no need on trying again, because obviously I'm not good at this, or obviously I'm not going to get the outcome that I want, or thinking that I'm no good. And, and when you do this, you feel this disappointment in yourself, because at the core, you feel like I should be able to do this. I should know how to do this. I should take action. But I let my head get in the way and get my thoughts, let my thoughts control me so I don't take action. And you feel disappointed in yourself. You feel frustrated with yourself. And you also feel unworthy of achieving your own dreams because you can't even get your mind in control. So how can you become this magnificent person that you want to be? How can you build this dream that you want to have for yourself when you can't even get out of your own head? So when we make that first mistake, when we allow self-doubt to paralyze us, we can't even take action and we continue to feel bad about ourselves because we can't take action. And that's the first mistake a lot of us make when we deal with self-doubt and we're struggling to overcome it is that we allow our thoughts and our self-doubt, our lack of confidence, a lack of trust to keep us from taking action. So taking any action, whether it's small or large, and as a result, we stay we allow self-doubt to become more powerful because when we don't take action, self-doubt becomes more powerful and we continue feeling that disappointment. We continue feeling that sense of regret for some of us. We continue feeling that sense of, um, of not thinking that we are worthy of doing the things that we want to do. A way to think about this, if you're thinking about like losing weight, for example, and you want to eat better, 
if you feel like, well, every time I eat better, I don't lose weight, or every time I eat better, I never really stick to it, then why am I going to continue eating better if I know it doesn't work? I'm just going to stop eating better because obviously I can't make it happen, right? Like I don't trust myself to make that happen. So you begin giving yourself all those thoughts in your head, and you don't give yourself the opportunity to actually become good at that thing because you're so used to thinking that you're not going to be good at it. All right. So that's mistake number one. That's you allow self-doubt to paralyze you. Number two, mistake number two is you take action, but you do less than your best because you're constantly questioning yourself. So if you are not paralyzed by self-doubt, if you manage to get to the next space, if you manage to like actually take some action, what ends up happening with your actions is that they are focused on these things that you don't think you can accomplish, right? So if you decide that you are going to eat better, so you begin eating better and then you start feeling like, oh, I'm not really doing good enough. I'm not really eating as good as I could be eating. Or you start thinking all these things, like like your thoughts will start playing tricks on you and you start feeling like, see, I'm not even doing my best. Like I only eat during certain days. I don't eat it all the time. You know, you don't meet yourself where you are. And as a result of that, you constantly feel like you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. So when you feel like you're not doing enough, you feel like, like you should, you should always be doing more. We always have this feeling like I should always be doing more. I'm not doing enough right now. And um, when you when you feel this way, as a result of feeling this way, you uh, I have my notes right here. Yeah. So as a result of you feeling like you're not doing enough, you can't be present in your everyday life because you're constantly thinking about that thing that you feel like you should be you should be doing. An example of this is when keeping up with like our food example that we've been carrying through the first mistake. You start eating healthy and instead of eating healthy every single day, every single meal, you start to notice that you have some inconsistencies and your self-doubt kicks in and tells you this is exactly why you can't achieve this. This is exactly why you're not good enough. This is exactly why, you know, you shouldn't even try to do this because you can't even keep it up. You can't even do it all the time perfectly. And once those thoughts start coming into your head, you start feeling like I am not doing good enough. I should be doing more. I should be pushing myself harder. And then every time you are doing other things, whether it's spending time with your family, whether it is spending time with yourself doing other things, whether it is um, reading a book that you enjoy or maybe taking the kids in the park or maybe just sitting around watching TV, you're thinking about the fact that you are not doing enough and you can't be fully present in your experience because your mind is over there with self-doubt judging you negatively and speaking down on you because you're not perfect. And a lot of us struggle with self-doubt and struggle to, to take action. Um, and when we take action, we struggle because we don't do our best. And to do your best means to acknowledge that you've done all that you could and then try the next day, you know? Like if right now at this stage of your journey, you're feeling like, I have done, I've, I've taken some steps to eat better. I'm right now, I'm at three days a week. Then that's where you are. You have to meet yourself wherever you are. And later I'm going to talk about why we struggle with that in one of the later mistakes. But that's one of the root reasons why we struggle with this particular approach. Because when we take action and we're still focused on all the things that we don't trust about ourselves, we keep ourselves from building that trust with ourselves in the, per- in the first place. So number three, mistake number three. You don't acknowledge that your self-doubt is learned. This is one of the things that I had to realize in my life because I didn't realize at first that self-doubt is something that you learn. It's a behavior that you learn. You weren't born with self-doubt. You learned that behavior. You learned that behavior at home. You learned that behavior with your family, with your, with your, with your peers at school, with your partner, with your children. Like that, they are the ones that teach you these things. You are not born with this thing, and. If you were, if you lived in, a, in an environment that was supportive, if you lived in an environment that encouraged you, that did not patronize you when you failed, <clears throat> excuse me, an environment that allowed you to experience life without putting too many restrictions around you, um, if you lived in that type of environment, you are probably a very confident person. You probably have a lot of trust in yourself because you've had the time to build that trust in yourself. You've had the time to think about what are the things that you want to do. You have the time to really explore how are you going to get there. So you've been able to work towards those goals over and over again. An example is my husband. You know, JP and I grew up, JP grew up in a type of environment where he was very supported. He had uh, a lot of encouragement from his family. He was really clear on what he wanted to do. People didn't really get in his way of growth because sometimes people can get in their way in our, in, in the way of our own growth by forcing and projecting themselves onto us over and over again. And 
he 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 was able to accomplish so much and he's such a confidence person confident person even though he struggles with self-doubt sometimes he doesn't allow self-doubt to paralyze him and when he makes decisions he doesn't think he, he doesn't spend time thinking about well should I really have done this or I'm not good enough or you know I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing my best like he doesn't think about that because he's able to deliver his best he's able to trust in himself he's able to trust in his ability to take action because he has been taking the action for himself for the things that serve him for many years of his life. So he has built that muscle. You take me on the other hand, I grew up in an environment that there were a lot of people who were in the house where I grew up when I was a kid. I was one of many. So I was constantly seeking attention. I didn't grow up with my parents. So I struggled with some issues of abandonment because of that, issues of feeling like I'm not good enough because my parents didn't think I was good enough for me. At that time, that's how I received it. Um, now I understand that they were they were doing their best. But at that time, I didn't really capture it in that way. So as a result, I always grew up feeling like I had to compensate for something. I always end up feeling like, like I wasn't doing enough, no matter what it was, because I never got enough attention from my perspective. So as you fast forward and turn and I become an adult and even launch this business, there are there were a lot of times where I felt like, I don't know if I really can, if I can really do this. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I don't know if I'm moving in the right direction. I don't know if if this is what I need to do. People say to find my voice, I don't know what that means. And I had all these thoughts and all this doubt in my head because of all these things I hadn't addressed from when I was a kid, all these things that forced me to, to learn these lessons, right? So to learn self-doubt and to learn to practice self-doubt and to utilize self-doubt to shield myself from my own greatness. And a lot of us don't realize that, that that's where that comes from. And, and the crazy thing about it is that if you learn that, if you realize that you learned, you, you can learn self-doubt, then you can also unlearn self-doubt. You can also get to a place where you're not allowing your thoughts to paralyze you. You're not allowing your thoughts to control your actions. Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to take action, number one. And then number two, you want to be able to take actions that serve you and serve the things that you want to achieve for yourself. And when self-doubt is in charge, you can't do that. You're not able to do that because you're too busy thinking about what you think you can achieve or what you what you what you what you feel like you can achieve based on things that might have happened in the past or just based on your thoughts. And just because you think something, it doesn't mean it's true. Number four, mistake number four, you haven't been available to building your confidence in yourself. A lot of us deal with a struggle with self-doubt because. When we get into the process of trying to overcome self-doubt, we never really stop to say, well, how do I build this confidence? How do I build this trust in myself? How do I go from someone that doesn't have confidence in themselves to someone that actually has that confidence and that trust in themselves? We are always thinking, well, I got to get out of my head. or I got to stop thinking about this or I got to let it go or I just got to deal with it. But you never stop to think about how do I turn this around? How do I unlearn this behavior and learn to trust myself? And because of that, so many of us struggle. Most people feel like a lack, of, a lack of confidence because they're following all these rules, right? You have society's rules and you feel like you should have arrived by somewhere. You should have arrived somewhere by now. Um, for most of us, that's the dream, right? The dream of having, you go to college, you get an education, you get your degree, you get your good job, you find somebody, you make some, you, you somehow make it, pre um, get married, get pregnant, have some kids, um, and, you know, buy the house. And, 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 live, and live happily ever after. But a lot of us get to this place and we don't feel that, su that success or that fulfillment that we thought we were going to feel. A lot of us get any one of those things and we don't feel like we have arrived, quote unquote. A lot of us get to those places and we realize that there's, it doesn't feel new. It doesn't feel like I've made it. It doesn't feel joyful or happy or you still feel, or even if you feel joyful or happy, you still feel like something is missing. And when you get to that place, the thing that you're missing is the thing that you really want. You've been so focused on following these dreams that society has set up for you. They basically said, hey, you, you need to go do this thing over here. You never got a chance to agree or disagree or determine whether you want to do it in that way or not. You were programmed with this dream and now you've made it your life, your life to, to go and find this dream. And when you get to the end, 
of the dream, you realize that this wasn't what you were promised. This wasn't the outcome that you were promised. And a lot of us, particularly those of us that are millennials, we are getting to that point right now where we're noticing that this wasn't the thing that that I thought I was going to get. Like I thought I was going to feel differently and I don't. And that can be really tough to face. And instead of questioning the entire system, we start feeling like, what is wrong with us? I need more. I need, I need, I need, a, I need a more money. I need a bigger house. I need more children. I need a new husband, or I need more attention from my husband, or I need this, or I need that. And, and we just start feeling like I don't have enough. We start feeling like, um, like we we start feeling like there's there's so many things that that I need to do so that I can get there because we start comparing ourselves to our left and to our right. And then this perfectly curated world of social media that we live in, we see that so-and-so is allegedly happy over here. And we see that blah, 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 blah is allegedly happy over there. So we feel like, what are we not doing to get that happiness? What are we not doing to get that joy, to get that fulfillment? And we feel like we need to do more instead of taking a step back and asking ourselves, is this really my dream? instead of being honest with ourselves and, and questioning the entire system. Most people are unavailable to be honest with themselves and accept that, that this is not their dream. And the reason why they're not able to do that is because to accept that this is not your dream means to face the reality that you haven't achieved it. And a lot of us still want to achieve this dream, even though, we, we don't, we, we, even though it's not our dream, even though it's being programmed into us, we believe it's our dream now. So we're con- we committing our lives to something that is not really ours. And that's why we always feel like something is missing because the thing that you're searching for, it's not, it's not the thing that you want to search for. It's not the thing that's supposed to be there for you. And you're forcing someone else's dream onto yourself. And that's why when you get there, you feel like there's something missing. What is it that's missing? And what tends to happen is that we don't want to really, we, we think it's easier to follow someone else's dream. And this may come to a shock, as a shock to some of you, but it's easier for you to follow somebody else's dream. You know what the dream is. You know what the rules are. You know what you need to do to go get it. You know, uh, you know the things that, you, you, that will happen if you don't get it. You know? So you have all these rules that are already guiding you. When you decide to create your own dream, you have to make all that stuff up. You have to decide what are those rules. You have to decide what's going to be your path. You have to decide what you want from life. You have to decide how you're going to go get it. And sometimes what you decide is not going to be in alignment with what people want for you. And then you're going to feel like you're disappointing those people. So to be in a position where you want to build your own dream, you have to be ready to disappoint people. You have to be ready for people to not be happy with your decisions. You have to be ready to do what you have to do to make yourself joyful and at peace without being worried about what other people are thinking about. Because you can't control other people. But too many of us don't get to that place because we're not available to build our own confidence. We're not available to do the work that it takes to build that trust. When I decided to leave my nine to five with my husband, and my husband also decided to leave his nine to five, um, I remember not having, not really knowing what he meant to do that. I remember feeling like I'm tired of this place. I had been, I had struggled with being at places where I, I felt like I had overstayed my time before. So because I always struggled to leave, leave certain places, I stayed at jobs way longer than I had to, the same way I stayed in relationships way longer than I had to, both platonic and romantic. Um, I've entertained things in my life way longer than I had to because I've had this self-doubt keeping me paralyzed, keeping me in situations that weren't serving me. And I remember when I when I finally took the deci- made the decision to leave my nine to five, and when my husband was like, "Yes, I'm on board," a lot of that came from being tired of doubting myself, being tired of being in a place where I felt like I didn't belong. So I realized that, yes, I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know if it's going to be great, but I also don't know if it's going to be terrible. And a lot of us allow self doubt to keep us thinking that things are going to be terrible. And we don't want terrible. We want to stay where we are because at least where we are right now doesn't feel that bad because we've been in it so long that we don't even realize how bad it is anymore. And, and that's why this mistake is such an important mistake to, 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 to acknowledge because if you haven't been available to build your own confidence and your self-trust, it's a, it's a, if you haven't done that, it's because you are not available to see your reality, to see where you truly are right now and to determine whether you want to do that or not. Another example that is a little bit lighter, I remember I, I had long hair for a long time. I glorified the idea of having long hair. Being from Honduras, 
being a Garifuna and just coming from a family in Latin America, like this, this, this just saying that your hair is your beauty. So I always had this thing about wanting to be beautiful. So I'm like, I need to have long hair to, have to be beautiful. And the older I got, the more I realized that long hair is a lot of work. <laughs> and it's a lot of unnecessary work. And because of how I am and the things that I enjoy to do, growing my hair out, it was like a process, right? So I had went natural. I wanted to crush my berries and, and, and my strawberry, my berries and my uh, oils and, and my avocado and do my own deep conditioning, do my own um, shampoo, do my own everything. I wanted to, everything needed to be homemade. If I can't eat it, I can't put it in my head. And it was exhausting. Every Saturday, it would take the entire day to get my hair done. Between the deep conditioning and the two strand twisting, and hopefully that comes out right, because you know every YouTube on vid- every video on YouTube tells you how to do something, and you get to it, and you're like, "This doesn't look how it's supposed to look, ma'am." Um, whether it was, you know, having my cap on, like it was just work to get this done. And I remember before I cut my hair off the second time, because I big shop one time because my hair was super unhealthy. And I was like, uh, this person like put a lot of heat damage on it. And I was devastated because I had been growing my hair out for two years. So I was in my feelings. Um, but I, the second time I, I big shop, I just thought to myself, I don't really like no hair like that. I don't like doing all this work. I don't need to do all this work. And I've always admired women with short hair because I felt like they just had such confidence in themselves that they didn't need the hair to hide who they were. And I felt like my hair was hiding who I was. And I was like, I'm ready to build that trust. I'm ready to build that confidence. And, and I was like, I'm gonna cut this off. Cause why, what am I doing? I don't like this. And, and it took a lot for me to understand that. And then once I did it, I had to realize I really, really like my short hair once I cut it off. And I ended up cutting more and more and more until now that you see I barely got any left. But when I went home and when my parents saw my pictures, they were like, what's going on? Like, why did you cut your hair off? Like, what's happening? They were having a tough time with it because my family, they is all about the long hair. And I, and my hair was pretty long by the time I cut it. It was like somewhere over here if you straighten it out. By the time I cut my hair, they were like, what's going on with you? Like, why did you cut that? And and it was because I, I was done with it. I didn't really care. And, and part of it was not really caring about the fact that they cared so much. I was like, it's just here. It will grow back. And, and I don't, I'm good. And I think too many of us are not available to see how much we don't want to do certain things because it requires facing what we do want to do and then doing it. And we're not ready to do it. And I don't know if I would have cut my hair and never and like just kept it short for for like a while, three or four years ago, because I wouldn't have been ready to see that I didn't care that much about long hair because I was still trying to hide who I was. And to to be available to build your confidence is to stop hiding who you are. That's how you you build that trust in yourself. Is to like be like, this is who I am. You're gonna love it or you're not. Like it, this it, this is on you. And a lot of us say that but we don't really practice it. And, and that's, that's an issue. And I want to share with you what happens when you decide to create your own dream. Because I've talked a lot about this and how it's a lot of work and people run away from it. But there's something really beautiful that happens when you create your own dream. I know because I built my own dream and I help my clients build their own dreams too. So I can share that with you from their experience and my perspective. When you build your own dream, when you decide to build your own dream, you have clarity on what you want. That's the first thing. So many of us don't have clarity on what we want. We think we know what we want, but we're not sure. We can't really commit to it. We can stand by it. We're still too worried about people thinking over here and thinking over there. Once you're clear on what you want, that you really, really want, not what society wants you to do, but what you really, really want, you won't care what's happening over here. You won't care what's happening on your left and what's happening on your right. And if you do care, you're going to care a lot less. And over time, you're going to care less and less and less until you so focus on you that you don't even see it anymore. And that's one of the things that can happen when you have clarity, when you build your own dream. Now, when you have clarity on what you want, then you have the courage to take action. Because as we talked about, some of the mistakes that happened before, mistake number one is that um, self-doubt keeps us from taking action. So when you have clarity, you can take action. You're, you know what you need to do. You can take that action. And then when you take that action and you have the curse, take that action, you're going to feel good. 
there's something so amazing, the, the, like the feeling of knowing that this is what you want and this is you're working towards it and you're taking those tiny steps to move you towards the direction of your dream. That, that feels freaking amazing. I, I never, I could never verbalize what that feeling was like until I, I began doing my work now, until I left DC and started my own business, until I really was available to see my husband as a man and not just my husband. And it just feels good to become the woman that you want to be. And, and, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's those tiny decisions that we make on a regular basis that take us there. And it feels amazing. And when you feel amazing about something, you're excited. You're excited because you're making progress and you're making your dreams a reality. And when you're making your dreams a reality, guess what you're not doing? You're not pretending. You're not pretending to be someone that you're not. You're not pretending to be, you're not, you're not carrying the load of hopelessness and the cloud of expectations and, and, and dreams of other people on your shoulders. And when you don't have that, that weight, that weight, that thing weighing you down, you feel light like a feather. You have the sense of ease about you. You know why you're taking your actions. And when self-doubt comes up and you're like, should you really be doing that? You can tell self-doubt, yeah, I'm going to do that. You know why? Because I'm clear on what I'm looking for. Because I know what I want to accomplish. Because I know how good it's going to feel when I get to the next step. And that's what's possible when you build your own dream. So yeah, it could be really tough to do it in the beginning. But once you decide to do it, the rewards of building your own dream, the rewards of following your true self, is it outweighs trusting yourself. It outweighs building that confidence because you get to live the life you really are on this universe to live. And not, this, not, the, not, not the, the, the textbook life that the, the society has told us, but the real life. Because if it was based on that textbook life, I wouldn't be here. I would be working at a nine to five. I probably would have some kids by now. I definitely would be living on for the weekend, living for the weekend, living for Friday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, um, I'll probably be really stressed and tired and overwhelmed and depressed and anxious. And I will be struggling to get to know myself because I will be pretending to be someone I'm not. And I don't have to imagine that because that's where I was when I left DC. That's where I was when I began doing this, when I, when I began my healing process. That's where I was when I realized how important it is to build your dream. So I know firsthand what it feels like to not build your dream. And I know now what it feels like to build your dream. And I, would, I, would, I wouldn't trade this journey of building my own dream for anything because it has transformed my life in ways that I could never imagine. So yeah. Number four, number four is a, it's a very powerful mistake we need to be on the lookout for. We have to be, you, you, you have to be available to build your confidence. If you're not available to build that confidence, you're going to struggle, boo. And it's going to be hard for you. And you're always going to feel like you're always struggling, no matter how hard you try. And, and that's, not, that's not a good feeling. And it's exhausting. It's draining. And that's not what the universe wants for you. That's not what you want for yourself. So we need to be able to overcome that so that we don't find ourselves in those situations. Mistake number five. You don't monitor your patterns, so you struggle to see yourself for who you are. So let's talk about monitoring patterns, right? Like, what does that even mean? When, you, when I talk about man monitoring your patterns, I'm talking about jotting down what it's like to be you. Like, a lot of us think we know how we are. And you may know how you are, but you really don't have the full picture. There are so many things about you that you don't know. There are so many things that you do on a regular basis that you don't realize because you're, they are habits and you're used to, have made, to, to your habits and we operate out of habits. And I just finished, I'm reading The Power of Habits right now and it's such a great and insightful book. And, and I recommend it to everyone because I've learned so much about the things that I thought were so easy to change that are habits because our bodies, they don't need your permission to build a new habit. You build the habit. And a lot of us have a lot of habits that don't serve us. A lot of quote unquote bad habits. And, and we, our body didn't ask for our permission to do that. Um, my body didn't ask for permission to build the habit of eating sneakers every Saturday. I, I did that and my body was like, okay, this is our thing now. 
And, and it's not my habit now, <laughs> but that's an example of a habit that you that you can have that your body just just does it. Maybe your habit is not eating the Snickers. Maybe your habit is you know eating out on every single day or or something of that nature. Or maybe your habit is gossiping with your friends every single Saturday morning or something like that. Your you develop that habit because you take these actions over and over again, and sometimes you don't realize how much you do that. So in order to to see what's going on with you, to see the reality of who you are, you have to begin paying attention and making some notes. And I call this process monitoring your patterns. And when you monitor your monitor your patterns, you ask yourself, okay, what's going on with my myself? Like, what am I doing today? You start jotting down things and 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 saying, well, what time do I usually wake up? Or what time? What do I usually eat? Um, uh, what, what do I use? Do I drink enough water? Um, do I spend time with myself? How much time do I spend talking to my girlfriends? How much time do I spend a happy hour? How much time do I spend with my man or you know my girl, whoever's listening, watching this, um, with my partner? How much time? Like, what do I, what do I usually do when I'm upset? What do I usually do when I'm happy? What do I usually do when I'm frustrated? What do I usually do when things don't go my way? Um, what do I usually do when people don't, when people reject me or when people don't approve of my actions? Like these are questions that you think you might know the answer, but I can guarantee you, you probably don't because I had no idea what the answers for these questions were for myself until I began to notice certain things. I used to think that I was always on time. Apparently I wasn't. <laughs> When I began monitoring my patterns, I re- and when I began monitoring the, pa- the patterns, and part of that was asking my friends to share with me things about me. And one of the questions I asked them was, what's one thing they cannot count on me for? What's one of my weaknesses? And my friends and colleagues came back and they were like, being on time. I was shocked because I thought I was always on time. And now suddenly I am learning that I'm not always on time. I'm actually late most of the time. And I had no idea that was a thing. And, it was, and at first, I didn't even believe it when they said it. That's the other thing. People told me, and I didn't believe it when they said it. And it wasn't until I started noticing that I was like, you know what? I am always late. Like, why is the lift here and I still have the lift waiting? Or why was I supposed to be at a certain place 30 minutes ago and I miscalculated the time? Or why, when they said we're leaving at this time, I'm not ready by that time? And I started noticing that that was my pattern. And it was because I had been writing down some of these notes. And a lot of us don't write down notes about us. We are so busy trying to be experts on other people that we have no time to become experts on ourselves. And if there's someone they need to be an expert on, it's you. You need to be an expert on you, on what you're like, on what do you need to flourish? What do you need to become the woman that you want to be? What is keeping you from becoming the woman that you want to be? What kind of actions do you need to change? What kind of actions do you need to implement? And a lot of us never get to that point because we don't monitor our patterns. We don't know what we really like. So when someone tells you, oh, you're not on time, girl, you get defensive. You start fighting them because you're like, I'm always on time. I don't know what you're talking about. You're being a hater. And that's not the case. Maybe you're really not on time, but you're not available to see that because from your perspective, there's no proof that you're not on time. The last thing you remember is you being on time. And just because your intentions, as, uh, your, you have an intention for a certain outcome, it doesn't mean that that's the outcome that actually comes out at the end. And a lot of us are living our lives based on our desire outcomes, the things that we want to happen, the things that we think we, we do, and not the real outcomes, not who we really are, not the things that are actually happening, what they do. And, and unless, unless you begin to do some of that, you won't, you won't be able to, to win this battle. Because you're constantly in conflict between the person you are right now and the person you want to be. And I call the person that you are right now, your current self. And the person that you want to be, your future self. And you're constantly in, con- you're constantly in conflict between your current self and the future self. And who is going to win this battle? And when it comes to self-doubt, your current self has a lot of power because she's the one that can take action. And your future self is could be at a loss because if your current self doesn't take action, then your future self is not going to become the person that you want to be. So you always are in this in this fight of like, who am I going to, who I am right now versus who I want to be tomorrow. And, and if you're going to win that fight, you need to monitor your patterns because you need to know who you are today so that you can change so that tomorrow can have a better chance so that your future self can become the one that you want to be. Because when you monitor your, your patterns and you see your truth, you can decide, do I like my truth? Do I want to change my truth? How do I change that truth? And that was a major turning point for me because once I realized that I was always late, 
I was like, I don't like that. I don't like being someone that's always late because I want to respect people's time because I want people to respect my time and I can only control myself. And if I control myself, then I can put that same energy out there so that it is the energy that surrounds me. If I'm on time and I respect people's time, then the universe will reward me by having people around me that respect my time and that understand that I will not tolerate them disrespecting my time. But I can't do that with somebody else before I do it with myself. Because if you do it for yourself, you know how much work it takes. You can be patient with people. You can be patient with yourself. And you can learn what it looks like to do this work. And, and that's why it's so important that we monitor our patterns because they, give, they put us in a position of control. They let us decide whether we want to be late or not, whether we want to have long hair or short hair, whether we want to be confident or not, whether we want to have self-trust or not. Unless we monitor our patterns, we won't be able to make that decision because we won't be able to see it as clearly. We won't have the data. And humans need proof. You need to know. You need to, you need to see it. It's different if you see it than if somebody talks about it. Because when you see it, you're like, oh, I did do that. I was late last week and the week before that in last month. But if somebody tells me I'm late, I'm ready to fight because I'm never late. But if I see the examples of when I'm late, then I cannot ignore the data. I cannot ignore the information. And once you get to this point, you are able to determine if you want to change something, and once you're ready to change it, you can get the help that you need to change it. You can find the tools that you need to change it, and you can begin taking actions towards changing it. Some things that you're going to want to change about yourself, you don't know how to do yet because you've never done them before. And it's okay to love yourself and want to change yourself at the same time. I want to change things about me because I love myself, because I understand what it means to really show up for Yonori. I know there are some things I need to change. And those things are going to take time and work and patience. And, and you have to find those tools or those mentors to help you achieve that. And a lot of us never get to that point because we're so busy defending ourselves, defending who we think we are, who we think we need to be, and, and doing the things that we feel like we should be doing. And not who we really are. We're still hiding ourselves the same way I was hiding behind all that hair. It's how you are hiding from yourself, from your truth. And that's, that's why self-doubt wins. That's why that's that, that's that's why you're not winning that battle. And if you want your future self to win, if you want the if you want the woman that you want to become to win, then you have to overcome self doubt. You have to monitor your patterns and find the help that you need. And and I want to share some examples of what this looks like. Um, one of my clients, Meg, she started working with me. She was really struggling with feeling like she could take action like take the actions towards the things that she really wanted to do when that meant that people weren't going to be happy with her actions and working together and going through, you know, our time, she's been able to learn that, that she can only control herself and that when you don't show up for you and show up for other people instead, you can't fully be present for those people because you're, you're thinking about how you didn't show up for yourself. And because she has learned that, now she's more she's able to make herself a priority with more confidence. She's building that trust with herself because she's seeing, by monitoring her patterns, she's seeing how she feels when she doesn't show up for herself and she doesn't like it. And now she's taking steps to change it. Not only by working with me as a mentor, but by also taking action in her life. By following this, by following the, the, the tools I give her and by finding how to fit these tools in her life personalized in a personalized way, she's able to get really clear on, I don't like how this pattern is showing up and I want to change this pattern and I'm taking the steps to change this pattern. And you can do that too. You can do more than that because I've been able to do way more than that. And, and, and that's just one of the small examples of what, what Meg has been able to do. And, and this is going to snowball because the more she shows up for herself and, and doesn't put the needs of other people above her own needs, the more she does that, the stronger that muscle is going to get, the more confidence she's going to have in herself, the, the more trust she's going to build with herself. And you can build that trust with yourself too. And it all starts with you monitoring these patterns and getting really clear on what it means to overcome self-doubt and avoiding the mistakes that I already talked about. So I want to leave with you some, a section called, I want to leave with you something called putting it in practice. I'm trying something new. Um, putting it in practice. And this is, I want to I share, share with you a practical way on how you can make this happen for you, on how you can begin to, to take what I talked about today and, and put it in, into your life 
right away. Okay. So today, the moment you're watching this video, whatever the, the whether it's in the morning or the evening, over the next 24 hours, I want you to have a paper with you or you have your phone. You can have a, a document. You can open your notes section or on Gmail. You can use a Google Doc. Or if you like old school and like to write like me, you can use a, um, a Moleskine notebook, whatever. Bottom line, you just need to have this with you for the next 12 hours. In this document, in this page, right, I want you to write down I want you to, I want you to take, take this page out every time any form of self-doubt comes to your mind. Every single time you need to pull this paper out. And when you pull this paper out, as soon as self-doubt hits, right, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. The first question is, what is causing my self-doubt? So whatever is going on in that moment that made you pull that paper out, you're going to write it down. Like, you know, I'm experiencing self-doubt because... I have a meeting with a client and I'm not sure if it's going to go well. I'm experiencing some doubt because I have to have a difficult conversation with my partner and I don't want them to lash out. Uh, I'm experiencing some doubt because I want to go to the gym, but I suck at going to the gym. So I don't know if I want to do it. Whatever it is, just write it down. Right. So after you write, what's that? What's the thing that's keeping that, that made you take out that paper? The thing that triggered your self doubt? I want you to write down. Why do you feel this way? What is the reason why you feel like you cannot go to the gym? Why, why do you feel like because you, you know, wh like what, what is the reason why you feel like you can't talk to your spouse about this topic? Like, what is that reason? And write down why. Like, why do you feel like that? Write down the examples that support it. Just be really clear on the why. Like, why is this a thing? So an example of this would be, I, I experience of doubt when I'm having a meeting, when I schedule a meeting with a client and I'm not sure if the client is going to, um, you know, is, is going to, to be open to my ideas. And I feel this way because in the past, I've had several clients that have struggled with the ideas that I've shared with them. And as a result, it has made me feel like I can really talk to them openly about the things that I want to do. So I'm, that's why I I'm afraid to, or have the self-doubt to take this action, the lack of confidence, because I don't think I'm going to get the desired outcome that I want. And I want, I want to be able to express myself, right? So after you write down, what is the thing that's causing you to feel, to, to experience self-doubt, why you feel like that? I want you to talk about where did you learn that? I want you to write down, where did I learn this thing? Where did I learn to feel this way? Where did I learn that, that this is how it happens? Like, what's the first time that I learned that if people don't like what I say, I shouldn't say anything? When is the, like, when is the first time that happened to me? And after that, the question number four, or the fourth question I'm going to ask yourself is, how does this impact my life? How does having self-doubt about the situation impacts my life every single time? And you want to ask yourself these questions in that order. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, Nori, this is too much, girl. I can't even begin to ask all these questions. Like, I don't even know where to start. Well, if these questions are too much for you in this order, then you can simply start. Because the thing about monitoring the patterns is that you can start with as little or as much as you want to. So if you are thinking that this is too much, if you, you want to start with less than that, you want to have, oh, for the next 12, 24 hours, have the piece of paper with you. And every time something triggers your self-doubt, write down what triggered your self-doubt and call it self-doubt trigger list. And that way you can start seeing what are the things that you need to learn how to trust yourself with. And, and that's really the place where I will start. That's the place how, that I will, I will go to put it into practice. And, and yeah, and you wanna avoid the five mistakes that most people make when overcoming self-doubt. And just to remind you what those are is, um, mistake number one, you allow self-doubt to paralyze you. Mistake number two, you take action, but do less than your best because you're constantly questioning yourself. Mistake number three, you don't acknowledge that self-doubt is learned behavior. Mistake number four, you haven't been available to build in your self-confidence and your trust with yourself. And mistake number five is you don't monitor your patterns, so you struggle to see yourself for who you truly are. And by extension, you don't change yourself. And this is really, really powerful. So remember that to put it into practice, you want to 
have a piece of paper with you for the next 12, 24 hours. It could be digital. It could be a actual piece of paper. And then every time self-doubt comes to your mind, you want to pull your paper out and write down what trigger your self-doubt. Call this your self-doubt trigger list. And you want to have that with you at all times over the, over the next 24 hours. If you want to go deeper into this, you ask the first question, what trigger your self-doubt? And then you want to ask yourself, why do I feel this way about the situation? You want to ask yourself, where did I learn how to feel this way about the situation? And how is the situation, how is feeling this way about the situation impacting my life? And that's all I have for you today. I think this is really important for us to talk about. And I look forward to hearing from you on your thoughts about self-doubt and, and the information I've shared with you today. If you want to learn more about um, how to overcome self-doubt or how to work with a mentor to help you get with self, get through this process in, your, in this season in your life, I encourage you to check out IamHealthyFit.com where you can apply for a free study session with me and we can explore how to help you overcome self-doubt and how to get you to the, the finish line, how to, how to help you win the battle between who you are right now and who you want to be in the future, how to help you win the battle between your current self and your future self so that you can become who you want to be. I will see you in the next video. Bye.